come on, hit me. He's hyper. That corner and he's easy pickings for the Australian. We come up to the end of round number two. He's been shaky. You know. Far. Yeah, his opponent's 21 years old. He's had 78 Aye. professional fights, Jorge Payas. He should have hung up the gloves years ago, but he loves it. He used to be a... On July 8, 2017, Filipino boxer Albert Pagara squared off against Tai Aikawi Kawamayanae in a scheduled 10-round bout. During the fight, Aikawi spent most of the time clowning around the ring, dropping his guard and taunting his opponent. Hey, come on, hit me. He's hyper. Barely shot, but look at that. I think he's even meditating. Style. Very awkward style. Yeah. Uh, you don't hit with an opening glove, that's illegal. Right so, uh, sa mga ganitong klaseng fight attorney, ano nung kailangan i-focus uh, ni... But in round four, Pagamra caught him with a clean left hand to the body that knocked him to the canvas and to the hospital. Oh boy, let's see. Ayun, that's it. Too much clowning. On September 8, 2012, Vitaly Klitschko made the ninth defense of his WBC title against undefeated Mahmoud Char. Char attempted to aggravate Klitschko from the face-off by being rude, but the champion was not phased by his antics. Видеть мы увидим. Я очень надеюсь, что это будет очень увлекательное зрелище. Смотрите, что делает Чар. Он, мне кажется, кусаться сейчас начнет. Klitschko dominated the fight from the opening round, while Char continued being disrespectful and even deliberately threw punches after the bell for the first round. But in round two, Klitschko sent him to the canvas with a right hand. И тут же оказался в нокдауне. Боксер и вообще как точно попал левый сбок. Then in round four, a left hand from Klitschko opened a cut above Char's right eye, which prompted the referee to stop the fight because of excessive bleeding. Так рефери остановил бой, видимо вызовет врача сейчас. Мануэр, ну это мы видим уже поход останавливает поединок, но Чар не стреляет. Да, и остается. Он негодует. Посмотрите, да, такое поведение. Он говорит Виталию, давай продолжать. Владимир вышел кличко, стал между боксерами. Фрицдунок пытается успокоить Мануэля Чара. Сейчас становит бой, будет да. жаль. Потому будет что... жаль, будет жаль. Судя по рисунку, нас ждало серьезное противостояние. Вот этот удар, по-моему, после которого раскрылся. Да, точно. Вот этот левый бой, левый удар, врач запрет. On May 8, 1999, Augie Sanchez and Jorge Paez squared off for a scheduled 10-round bout. Before the fight, Paez put on an extravagant display in the ring. What we've seen so far. Yeah, his opponent's 21 years old. He's had 78 professional fights, Jorge Paez. He should have hung up the gloves years ago, but he loves it. He used to be a circus act. <laughs> and white tassels. In round one, Sanchez connected with a short left hook, which forced Paez to touch the canvas with his gloves. Older legs at 33. Oh, touches down. The both landed simultaneous shots there. Paez landed a left hook, but he took a better shot, and down he went. He's been given them. Immediately, the fight was allowed to continue. Paez began showboating and allowing Sanchez to hit him without defending himself. 
Rashford, and he's starting to rough Payas up now. Payas hands low. He is being outworked and outsmarted by a young fighter who looks to have talent. This is Payas trying to mess with his head. Good this is right Sanchez. Right. Sanchez. And he's got Payas on the rope. Be seeing the end of <laughs> the Payas career. Augie, well Augie. I don't know how long Payas can sustain this pace. That's more like it. Really. There's too many problems. Let's go. 33 year old. But in the final minute of round seven, Sanchez connected with a vicious left hand that sent Paez flat on the canvas. And that's good night, I think. Richard Steele counts, but surely Paez can't get up. He's out. I mean, Richard Steele should just wave this off. Orgi Sanchez has knocked out Jorge Paez in the seventh round, and that was a sensational finish from Kid Vegas. Well, that was nice because they answered a few questions about Sanchez. He didn't get all his own way. Sanchez, uh, Paez roughed him up, started to come back at him, was giving him a few problems, so he overcame those problems. And the finishing two punches with a couple of good His right hand finish off a solid. The Las Vegas kid, Orgi Sanchez. On May 9th, 2015, Canelo Alvarez faced James Kirkland in a scheduled 12 round bout. During the press conference, Kirkland promised to stop Alvarez at all costs. I know he's going to move, but the point is how long can you move the way I'm coming, you know? So I'm definitely, I definitely believe that it's going to be a toe-to-toe -to -toe type of battle because when you find out that you can't run, <laughs> you will do anything to try to stop the heat. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, I'm definitely uh, eager for the fight, you know, I'm definitely in, in a, I feel I'm in a better spirit when it comes for this opportunity so I'm just happy overall one, one thing I know for a fact the fight is not going to last 12 rounds 12 rounds of going heart blood sweat and tears it's not going to happen there's only one man that's going to stand at the end of the day yeah. and but one thing I say man this is what the first this is what the fans want this is what they get so when it comes to me fighting for uh Saul Alvarez and being prepared for him I'm 110% prepared for Saul Alvarez. I've watched him for the longest. I love his work, but this is what I. This is my show. This is my day. This is what's gonna happen. All right. Okay, those trunks are good there. Those trunks are good there. James, give me a good clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Canelo, yo quiero una pelea en Libia. Obedezcan mis órdenes y protejanse a todo tiempo. In the opening round, Kirkland came out aggressively, but Alvarez wobbled him with huge body shots before dropping midway in the round with a big right hand to the face. Try to play rope adult that tells you how hurt he must be. Well, Canelo taking his time and landing the big shot. Oh, the right it. hand, down goes Kirkland. Minutes still to go in the first round. In round three, Alvarez connected with a right uppercut that forced Kirkland to the canvas for the second time. And coming back. And telling him to cut there he is. Uppercut, knocks Kirkland down second. Kirkland got back up, but Alvarez unloaded another sweeping right hand that caused Kirkland to spin on the spot before crashing to the canvas unconscious. Right hand, and Shirley's going to stop the fight. What a performance by Canelo Alvarez. Maybe all things considered the most electrifying of Canelo Alvarez's career. Bermain Stiverd and Chris Ariola met for a rematch in May 2014 for the vacant WBC heavyweight title. During the press conference, Ariola promised to make history by defeating Stiverd. Let, let's just say this, man. Too much. You drink too come, much. Come this set, f I drink them. I'll, I'll, I'll drink you off the table any day, also, man. Shit. I'll drink and then this Saturday, I'm gonna f you up. That's a gut honest truth. You'll see this Saturday, man. You'll see this Saturday. Man, I, I ain't scared. Ain't nobody scared of you. Trust me, bro. Trust me. You, you'll see this Saturday. 
Once you get cracked, once you get cracked, you gonna realize. I got cracked plenty of times, bro. Uh, I've been cracked plenty of times, and I keep coming. I keep coming. I keep coming. coming. And I'ma keep coming. This Saturday, I'ma keep coming. I'ma win this title. I'm not gonna. You know what? I don't even. If it wasn't for you for the title, I'm, I'm there to f this guy up. F this guy. This guy's. He, now he's yapping. You know, before. I had respect for him I because you know what? He was a quiet dude. Yeah. You know what? I was like, all right, no, that's cool. But now I'm gonna fuck you up, you're gonna, dude. You're gonna remember me. You're gonna remember. You're gonna remember me. You're gonna remember me, dog. You're gonna remember me. I promise you. I'm, I'm telling you guys this. My food basket. This this Saturday. You guys are gonna watch a great fight. You guys are gonna make, watch history in the making, made by me. Not this Haitian. This Mexican's gonna do it. Yeah. I'ma do it. Promise that. Watch this. I got you. I'm, I'm, I'm pissed. I'm pissed. And for once, for once, he says something that got me going. And trust me, Last time too. you don't, you don't wanna, you don't wanna see me like this. And you already seen me like this. This Saturday, you'll see. And you over there purple. Shut the f up. His promoter also proposed that the losing promoter shave his head. The loser promoter, the losing promoter shaves her head. Come on, come on. Because we're going to have the new heavyweight champion right here, Chris Ariola. The trash talk continued after the first round fell and occasionally during the bout. In the sixth round, Stiverne caught Ariola with a sweeping right hand that caused the latter to do a funky chicken dance. Right hand! Ariola got back to his feet, but a flurry of punches sent him into the ropes for a second knockdown. Again, Ariola got back to his feet, but Stiverne continued with the onslaught, forcing the referee to step in and stop the fight. Too much, Chris. The winner by knockout victory. He is now the fighting pride of IET, and now the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, On August 14, 2015, undefeated Australian fighter Lucas Brown and Julius Long met for the first time in a scheduled 10 round heavyweight bout. It's <laughs> it's suitable. Let's see if he can last. In the early rounds, Long taunted his opponent by sticking out his tongue or dropping his guard, allowing Brown to connect with his shots easily. We come up to the end of round number two. He's been cheeky, you know, he's taking a tongue out. He's been. I As reckon it, you would have been a little boy. I was a little boy. I was a little boy. Five rounds, six rounds. Yeah, well, you, you know, as a fighter, how you you know progressing through the fight, mm -hmm. and if you you know, obviously you're going to be able to close um, if the fight is a long fight, like ten or twelve rounds. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, you got to pick your moments and just try to stay in, control. in some strife. And he, in the end, the round came to a conclusion. He was happy about that. <laughs> for wins, but he's awkward. And as long as we hear more about it tomorrow, about the Commonwealth champion's right hand and what damage he may have done in the early stages of this fight, but he gets in close again and there's a left lead and <laughs> Long shakes his head and shows a bit of contempt for the punches thrown by the Commonwealth champion. Long's on a few few go. Halfway through the eighth round, Brown unleashed a brutal combination that ended with a right hook dropping long in the corner. Anthony punching a will and down he goes. 150 to go in round number eight and the punishment in that neutral corner. Long got back to his feet and continued taunting Brown. Oh, <laughs> if he'd hit him there. <laughs> Probably would have found his head in the MCG if he got him there. 
25. It's been a big effort for him to stay. I thought he was gone midway. But in the final seconds of round nine, Brown connected with a big left hand to end the fight. Timekeeper. Oh, he's oh, put him down with hand. a big left hand right on the bell, and he won't be getting up from that one. He's, he said no, no count. I think uh, he ducks his head, and he, I think he looks ducks into it. There we go. There it is. He was sort of moving away, and as he was moving into it, it was a left hand went bang, and he wasn't getting up from that. Here it is again. You watch his head here turn. He turned his yeah. head and he went straight See, into the punch. He didn't have... Oh, big daddy, Lucas Brown! Which of these fights is your favourite? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to never miss another interesting update from this channel.